Hello everyone, Aslan Historian here. Whenever I talk with someone about the native cultures of the Americas, I meet face to face with a myriad of misconceptions and myths about the Native American cultures, from the fabled Maya Empire to stories of aliens drawing the Nazca lines. From distortions born out of ill-explained passages of history to direct frauds, a plethora of misconceptions affect the understanding that the general public has of the native civilizations of the Americas, and some of the most persistent and most mentioned of them are the ones related to the state of middle working in the pre-Columbian Americas. Many of the misconceptions around Native American metalworking are historically rooted in the fact that no new world culture developed siderurgy before the arrival of Columbus in the late 15th century. And given the importance of iron and steel for all world technologies, the lack of this metal in the Americas led to the notion that the native societies weren't capable of developing a proper metalworking industry. While the idea of a complete absence of metalworking in the Americas is easily challenged by the well-known examples of native jewelry made in gold, the notion of two continents devoid of any notable technological development in the work of metals persists, and today we're going to talk about that. Come on and join me in this quest to debunk some myths as we explore the historical reality of metalworking in the pre-Columbian Americas. The Long Stone Age One common idea about metalworking in the New World is that Native Americans only developed metalworking technologies several millennia after their old world counterparts did so thus leading to the idea that all native cultures from the Americas were sort of trapped in a long stone age, which only ended sometime close to the arrival of the Europeans, thus explaining the fabled gold treasures of the Inca and the Aztec. Well, here we have to understand that Native American peoples began working metals as early as 5300 BCE. The oldest metallic objects known to be produced in the Americas are harpoon points located near South Fall Lake on the US-Canada border. These points were made of copper, indicating that like their Eurasian counterparts, the North American native peoples began their work with metals using copper, more specifically the native copper found in the Great Lakes region. These developments were contemporary with the beginning of the Chalcolithic, the Copper Age in Europe, where the first proven smelting of copper took place at Belobode, an archaeological site in modern-day Serbia around 5000 BCE. Unfortunately, unlike their European counterparts, there is no evidence to back the presence of smelting in the Great Lakes, although there is evidence to suggest that the locals employed heat when working copper, using a technique known as annealing, which was later employed by the Mississippian cultures to manufacture copper artifacts, mainly ornaments. Although the presence of this technique in the Great Lakes back in 5300 BC is still subject of debate. Also, in a pretty interesting turn of events, this North American metalworking tradition, known as the Old Copper Tradition, didn't spread its metalworking technology beyond the Mississippian cultural area, which means that metalworking in the rest of the Americas developed independently from the Old Copper Tradition. In South America, metalworking would appear around the year. 2150 BCE, and unlike their North American and Eurasian counterparts, the South American natives wouldn't start their metalworking practice using copper, but gold. The oldest metallic artifact made in South America is a necklace made from native gold found at the archaeological site of Hiscairumoco near Lake Titicaca in southern Peru, making it the oldest gold artifact in the Americas and probably in the southern hemisphere too. Also, unlike their North American counterparts, the South American smiths developed smelting techniques, which can be attested on the archaeological record from around the year 1470 BCE, according to findings in the archaeological site of Putucio in present-day Ecuador. Copper working appeared in South America shortly after smelting was invented around the year 1200 BCE, according to archaeological findings in present-day Bolivia. Over the centuries, the Andean metallurgy would spread further north, into the its Colombian region, the Caribbean and eventually Mesoamerica, where it arrived in the early 7th century AD. This late adoption of metalworking in Mesoamerica 
is one of the main reasons behind the idea of the Long American Stone Age, given that most of the popular knowledge about the pre-Columbian Americas is inspired on what's commonly depicted about Mesoamerica in mass media. But even with this late adoption of metallurgy, Mesoamerica still had almost 1000 years to develop their metalworking technology, while its Colombians had 2500 years to do the same. So, it's not that the Americas were entirely devoid of metalworking traditions until some centuries ago, but that the spread of metallurgy from the Old Copper Tradition range or the Altiplano was slow and difficult to several reasons, including rough terrains, the lack of beasts of burden in most of the continent, among other factors. Dreams of Gold Gold we are told about legendary treasures made from this metal that enticed the conquistadors to take over entire nations, but the truth is that the use of gold in the pre-Columbian Americas has been subject of many misconceptions, especially regarding its scale and its role in the native cultures. While it's true that some societies like the Muisca and the Inca had impressive treasures in gold, the amount of precious metals in those treasures has been often exaggerated. For example, a common myth says that Pizarro got 82 tons of gold as ransom for the Inca Atahualpa, while in reality he got a bit over 6 tons, an amount 13 times smaller than the one commonly told. Also, speaking of golden treasures, most artifacts crafting gold in the pre-Columbian Americas were religious or ceremonial objects and in some cultures the use of this metal was so regulated that they actually implemented some sorry laws to keep gold out of the reach of commoners, as was the case with the Aztecs, who severely restricted the access to gold artifacts by only granting a few merchants the right to sell them and restricted who could acquire them. Funnily enough, the Aztecs didn't regard gold as a particularly valuable material, preferring other materials like jade and quetzal feathers as symbols of wealth and power. In fact, the Aztecs accumulated very little gold from their empire, to the point that some modern historians believe that Cortés was unable to pay for his expedition even with all the gold he got from Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital. Only gold. Besides gold, New World Smiths use many other metals when crafting jewelry, using a wide set of techniques from annealing to investment casting. This way, the Native American jewel makers crafted an impressive variety of artifacts over the centuries. As I mentioned before, copper was also used for ornamentation by numerous indigenous American cultures from Cahokia and the Mayan world to the Kimbaya and the Inca Empire. Meanwhile, silver saw relatively frequent use in jewelry among the peoples of the region, especially the Moche and the Inca. For example, Spanish accounts talk about the Inca, the ruler of the Tanguantinsuyu, owning a large collection of silver tumblers and plates which he used for special events. Some of the oldest artifacts made in silver found in South America were produced around the year 1300 BCE, which is the date of production given to a set of silver funerary masks found in the province of Jujuy in Argentina. Silver was also regarded as a sacred material among the Andean and Mesoamerican cultures, much like gold, and in the case of Mesoamerica, its use was quite rare to the difficulty of obtaining said metal with the native mining techniques. Another metal used in native New World jewelry was platinum, which was used in jewelry at least since the 2nd century AD. This is something quite noteworthy given that there wouldn't be a proper platinum working industry in the old world until the 18th century, when it began to be worked commercially in Spain. The first works in platinum are attributed to the Tumaco La Tolita culture, which existed in present-day Colombia and Ecuador between 600 BC and 200 CE. Interestingly enough, it seems that this technology survived in the valleys of present-day Ecuador all the way into the Spanish colonial period, as Spanish explorers still recorded native mining of platinum around 1735. The use of copper, silver and platinum in the New World jewelry was not only limited to purified or native metals, but also included alloys, often with gold. This allowed for more attractive and workable materials, thus helping to create more aesthetically pleasant results for native smiths and their patrons. One of the most common alloys used in jewelry was the one the Spaniards named Tumbaga, 
which is an alloy of gold and copper that was extensively used among the Muisca and other Ismocolomian cultures, as well as among the North Andean traditions like the Nariño culture. A similar alloy, which also included silver, was called guanin. This alloy was widely used in the Caribbean Basin and the Antilles since at least the 1st century AD, where it was used in the production of ceremonial artifacts like masks and the medallions worn by the Taino chiefs. Interestingly enough, this alloy wasn't produced in the Taino nations and had to be imported from the South American mainland, mainly from present-day Colombia and Venezuela. As we can see, the reality of metalworking in the pre-Columbian Americas was far more complex and diverse than what's commonly portrayed in mainstream media and pop culture. The Americas weren't a land trapped in the Stone Age nor a land filled with cities covered in gold, but a place where different cultures explored different ways to work different metals, including some that were exclusive to the New World Smiths for centuries, and in which many nations and cultures achieve a notable dexterity in metalworking and whose skill we can still appreciate in their creations today. Mixtec, Purepecha, Moche, Muisca, Sikant and Chimú peoples were the true masters of metal in the New World, even though their works are often unfairly ascribed to more popular cultures like the Aztec or the Inca, which weren't that dexterous in the work of metals as the cultures I mentioned before. On this video, I talk about the origins and diversity of metalworking in the New World, but there is still a lot of misconceptions to debunk about this fascinating aspect of Native American history and technology. So join me next time to talk about metal weapons, pre-Columbian money, and the rise of iron and silver works in the edges of the world. This has been Aslan Historian, and I'll see you next time.